This is part, part two, two of the uh, semester, second semester exam review. So let's take a look at the first question. All right, so this one says to expand the logarithm fully using our properties of logs, express your answer uh, in terms of log x and log y. So here we have the log of x to the third times y to the fifth. So remember, when you have log of a times b, we can write that as log of a plus log of b. All right, so this one, uh, we're simply going to have the log of x cubed plus the log of y to the fifth. But then remember that our exponents get written as the coefficient here. So it's 3 log x plus 5 log y. And that would be your final answer. All right, the next one. So this one says to write your uh, log equation as an exponential equation, um, and you do not need to solve for x. So remember in one like this, when you see a log, a log equation, or you have this log function, and you do not see a specific base, and that base is 10. So we could rewrite this as log base 10 of 3x minus 2 equals x, okay? And then remember, our um, if we're writing this in exponential equation, it's our base to the power of x that equals 3x minus 2. So you can think of it as like this. So 10 to the x equals 3x minus 2. So we're going to write this again with the base of 10 to the power of x, 10 to the x equals 3x minus 2. And this, asks, this tells us we don't have to solve for x. We just want to write it as an exponential equation. So that would be our final answer. All right, the next one. All right, so in this one, we're just kind of filling in uh, these blanks based on this graph of the function that we're looking at here. So what we have is a, uh, a log function, okay? So you can see that it's a logarithmic function with a horizontal, I'm sorry, a vertical asymptote here uh, when x is negative 8. So it's approaching this negative 8, but it never touches it, all right? Now, the range of this function is actually going to be all real numbers, or we could say from negative infinity to positive infinity because it shows it's going down forever and it's actually going up forever, okay? Now, as far as the end behavior on the left, okay, so as the x is approaching negative 8, then the y is approaching negative infinity. And the end behavior on the right, as the x is approaching positive infinity, then the y is also approaching positive infinity. So now let's take a look at the next question. So this wants us to solve the following logarithmic problem for the positive solution for x. So we're going to start by writing uh, this log uh, as an exponential function. So 32 to the negative 1 fifth equals x. And then remember, we can write our negative exponents uh, in the denominator to make them positive. So that's 1 over 32 to the 1 fifth. And then with our fractional exponents, uh, we'll write that as the root power. So 1 over the fifth root of 32 to the 1 power is 32. The fifth root of 32 is 2. So we could simply write this as 1 over 2. And that's uh, what x equals, 1 over 2. All right, next problem. All right, so this one says, perform the operation and express your answer as a single fraction in simplest form. So in order to solve this, we're going to have to have a common denominator. So think of the 4 uh, as the factors of 2 times 2. Uh, and then, of course, uh, this 1 over 2x to the 3rd uh, would be factors of 2 times x to the 3rd. So for this uh, fraction on the left, 3 fourths, it already has... Um, the factor of 4. So uh, from the 2x to the 3rd, we're just going to have to multiply uh, this fraction times x 
to the third. So we'll be multiplying the numerator and the denominator times x to the third. And then for this fraction over here, obviously you can see that it has one factor of two, but there's two factors of two in this denominator. So we're gonna need to multiply this fraction times two over two. All right, and then when we do that, we're gonna end up with 3x to the third for three times x to the third over and then 4x to the third, and then of course minus, and then one times two is two over and then 4x to the third. This is here our common denominator. So when we write our final answer, it's simply going to be 3x to the third minus two all over 4x to the third. That's our final answer. All right, next question. So this one wants us to solve for A and express your answer as an integer or integers uh, in simplest radical form. So when solving any equation, we're trying to get the variable by itself. So for this one, uh, we're going to need to subtract 1 from both sides. And when we do that, we're going to get negative 3A cubed equals negative 192. And then we're simply going to need to divide both sides by negative 3 in order to solve for a cubed. So now it says a cubed equals 64. So then a is going to be equal to the cubed root of 64. And the cube root of 64 is 4. All right, next question. Which type of conic is represented by the equation below? All right, so we have 4x squared plus 25y squared plus 6x plus 150y plus 141 equals 0. So notice we do have an x squared and a y squared. Okay, so we're looking at either a circle or an ellipse. And those terms have different coefficients. So we know that we have an ellipse. All right, is represented in this equation. Now, once you identify what type of conic it is, you are going to be asked to uh, write the equation, uh, the conic form of the uh, ellipse or whatever it is. So let me go ahead and write that up here, and then I'll talk through it. So here I've written the equation, uh, and I've put the x variables together and the y variables. So 4x squared plus 16x plus 25y squared plus 150y equals negative 141. I just moved the positive 141 over, negative 141. Then we're going to need to factor out the common factor of 4 and complete the square. So uh, this 16 became 4x because 4 does 4 is 16, and then half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So I added 4 to complete the square, but really 4 times 4 is 16, so I'm adding 16 to both sides. In this one, uh, the 25 and 150, I factored out 25. And that left me with y squared plus 6y, because 25 times 6 is 150. And then, of course, half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So I added 9 to complete the square, but it's 9 times 25, which is 225. So I'm adding 225 to both sides. Write that all out. You have 4 times x plus 2 squared plus 25 times y plus 3 squared equals 100. Because we know this is an ellipse, we need it to equal 1. So we're going to divide by 100, all of it by 100. With the x variable here, 4 over 100 simplifies to 1 25th. So we have x plus 2 squared over 25 plus, And then the y variable, the 25 over 100 simplifies to 1 fourth. So we have y plus 3 squared divided by 4 equals 1. That is your equation. And, of course, if you're asked to graph it, uh, you understand that the hk is the, uh, the, uh, the vertex. or the um, Yeah, so we have, I'm sorry, negative 2 and negative 3 is going to be the center of the ellipse, not the vertex, but the center. And then the a squared, or... Uh, the major axis is going to be uh, the square root of 25, which is 5. So it's going to be 5 to the right and 5 to the left on the, x, on the x axis. And then the b squared is 4, so b equals 2. So we're going to go up 2 and over 2. All right, next question. 
All right, so in this question, you're actually asked to write the equation of this conic section. I think I forgot uh, to clip the question. But anyways, this is a parabola. So the first thing you might want to notice is the vertex, which is at negative 1, positive 1. So that's our hk. Also, we can see here uh, that it does open to the left, so it's going to be negative. It's also horizontal. Uh, but the p-value, the distance from the vertex to the focus, is negative 3. So if p is negative 3, then 4p is going to be negative 12. And that's what we're going to use in our equation. And because this is horizontal, it's the y-value uh, that's being squared. So this equation is going to be y minus k, so y minus 1 squared is equal to 4p, and the 4p in this one we decided is negative 12, and that's times x minus h, so that's x plus 1, which is uh, the opposite of what you see in here. So that will be our final equation for this one. All right, let's take a look at, I think, one more problem. All right, so in this one, uh, this is about long division. Basically, you're dividing 12x cubed plus 5x squared minus 27x plus 13 by 3x minus 1. So we're not going to be able to use the synthetic division, so we just need to set it up and do the long division. So we just set up the long division, uh, and we divide this first term, 3x, into the 12x cubed, and that goes 4x squared times. And then you multiply this times both of these terms, 4x squared times 3x is 12x to the cubed, or to the third, and then 4x squared times 1 is minus 4x. And then remember to subtract both of those. You get your remainder of 9x squared. You bring down the next term, which is minus 27x. You start back here again. 3x into 9x squared goes 3x times. Then you multiply 3x times both of these terms, and you get 9x squared minus 3x. And again, you subtract those to find the remainder, which is negative 24x. Bring down your last term, 13, and then go back to the first terms again, and you get minus 8. When you multiply that, Minus 8 times both those terms, you get negative 24x plus 8. And then you'll see you have a remainder of 5. And we write the, we write the remainder of 5 over uh, what we're divided by 3x minus 1. And that is your final answer. All right, and that should be the end of this review.